what uh, uh, the movers in trade today, are you, uh, is that indicative of the signs uh, that are yet to come? There is the private banks that will now lead the markets going ahead? It's too early to say that because, uh, you know, right now the markets are still going on to an expiry mode as well as an, uh, you know, event uh, kind of a mode. So preparing for the event. And I think in that uh, anticipation, I, I'm pretty certain that the markets would probably want to go in light uh, as much as possible in terms of, uh, you know, the positioning, uh, you know, specifically to the events. And, you know, the pockets like private sector banking names, this was a pocket which was uh, earlier over the last, uh, you know, two, three expiries going into, uh, you know, deep swelling in terms of short positions. Now that, one of the reasons why these stocks are outperforming is maybe because of some reduction of short positions over here. And same is the case with the performing sectors, the performing stocks like the PSUs, PSU basket as, uh, you know, such overall, which had done exceptionally well using, uh, you know, some bit of long and winding of profit booking happening over there. So I believe that net net it's a juggling of positions and uh, coinciding with the expiry as well as with the event, which is keeping the indices as well as the market, uh, you know, in this kind of shape. Now, 22,700 was a critical uh, you know, short-term support which we highlighted a couple of days back. That's decisively broken and we are now threatening to go below the 22,500 mark as well for the Nifty. And I, and I think on that sense, we could be looking at maybe some bit of uh, nervousness coming back into the indices. The concern for the markets, I think, so far in the last four or five days is what's happening across the globe because many of the global markets, uh, the US as well as the European markets, they've started to recede by a margin of 4 to 5%. I think that's going to be, you know, some important pressure to watch out for. Yeah, for now, the pre-market rates in the US are suggesting further downticks. So Dow futures are down a solid 300 points right now, even though the European markets are just about that flat line and a bit of a green there, but the Asian markets definitely ended in the red. So, Kospi was down 1.5%, Nikkei was down, Hansen down almost 1.3%, so all of that clearly playing a part. But Sandeep, would you utilize this dip to buy already or would you wait for the verdict to be out? Uh, in my view, uh, this fall has nothing to do with the elections. Like you yourself said in the previous sentence, you counted out the market and how much they have fallen. And Nifty has fallen almost exactly as that much. So we are part of the global ecosystem. We cannot escape that. So if we were part of the global up move and we are part of a global correction. So I think that's what people should read into it. On the uh, overall, uh, as a strategy, there should always be some cash on the sidelines to deploy whenever the opportunities come. But uh, only because of the election potential uh, election results, whether we should be holding cash, I don't think so. Well, my base case is that the same government will continue. So in case uh, that doesn't happen, which I believe is a remote possibility, then I think post-election strategy has to be very different. That's a logical argument, right, Sandeep, that the Indian markets are pretty much mirroring what's happening across the globe. But sentimentally speaking, there is an event which is at play and it does have an impact on the momentum. And more likely or not, uh, the expectation is that there's going to be a comeback of the current government, which means that the, we might be poised for an up move post the election verdict is out. Then does it not make sense to already, uh, you know, kind of deploy money? It again comes back to the question of whether we think that just because of an election verdict, which is in any case expected, do we start defying global uh, uh, market movements? I don't think that's going to happen. And to that extent, uh, given the fact that most of the global markets moved to all-time highs only last week or 10 days back and are seeing a bout of correction, it's natural for India also to correct. I think we just had a 3-4% correction from the top. If it corrects another 3-4%, then on specific stocks, we could uh, start seeing opportunities. You, I'll quiz you more on those specific stocks that you would have in your buying list. But for now, yes, it's almost 6 700 points which have been shaved off of Nifty in a matter of 3 to 4 trading sessions. Today, of course, the expiry is also coming at play and that's why we are seeing a bigger, sharper fall in the last few minutes itself below the mark of 22,500 right now. But in terms of individual movers, Godfrey Phillips had just come out with its earnings and it looked like a good set optically. So that stock had seen a positive reaction post the earnings. Let's pull up that one on our intro day basis how that's doing you also have electronic marts india which has managed to perk up jb chemicals is looking all uh, okay in terms of the result reaction imami is high by 15 percent while alualia contracts is down and tata steel as well is down 
Um, just wanted to get a sense from you, Sandeep, if you've looked at the numbers and the commentary coming in from Imami, does that give you any further confidence on that rural recovery play that we have been discussing of late? Yeah, so I think rural recovery is imminent and uh, many companies have also uh, said that because cash flows in the rural areas initially improved because of the elections and now there's an expectation of a normal monsoon. So I think the rural reco uh, economic recovery story should be for real and to that extent there is no reason to doubt it especially uh, when inflation overall seems to be uh, in control. As the uh, take about uh, the ones that are based on the rural play and uh, Kunal yes uh, IMD uh, today has informed that finally you have uh, the rainfall set in over uh, Kerala and also move towards the north uh, west uh, India but uh, what's your take coming in on these FMCG plays, uh, which have actually seen a good run-up uh, uh, post their Q4 earnings, I believe. Hmm. What's your take coming in on that uh, particular uh, segment as a whole and which is your top bet? So, on the FNO side, I think Britannia is something which is the best performing one. That stock has been doing pretty well. You have the likes of uh, HUL, which is showing good strength over the last, uh, I think, one month or so. A recovery of almost 10% from its uh, you know previous lows, around 2200, 2150-odd mark. So I think that's also done reasonably well, coming in line of breaking past above its critical moving averages. Then you have the likes of uh, you know Nestle, uh, Darbar, Marico, etc., which are also going to a, a bit of a recovery for themselves, even though many of these stocks have still yet to give uh, signs of confirmation of a breakout for themselves. So I would believe that uh, you know it's a bit more fragmented for the FMCD stocks. Some of them have uh, you know shown signs of a breakout, like Britannia. Some of them are going to a recovery phase. The likes of uh, uh, you know, Marico as well as uh, HUL, etc. Uh, so I believe that it's, uh, you know, it's a matter of choice over here. If someone is looking to just ride on to the trend and the stronger ones, I would believe buying Britannia, st staying on to the stock could be a much more better proposition. And for someone who's looking out for a contra, you know, pick over here, then I believe the likes of HUL could also make, uh, you know, uh, good trading sense from current levels of 2300.